Welcome Gemini to your in-depth monthly horoscope for April 2024 for the Ascendant, the Sun or the Moon. I'm going to give you some standout details to look out for but please stay with me. I will explore in much greater depth all the ins and outs particularly relevant to your sign. Now your ruler is Mercury and Mercury starts a retrograde on the first of this month which will go on for 23 days through to the 24th it actually emerges from that. Now Mercury retrograde in the sign of Aries for you is your sector of relating around your friendships, your network, your social interaction but also the things that really inspire you, those higher ideals that do go beyond the more material part of your situation. Now that part of your chart, the 11th house, really comes to life in a very powerful way this month but also at the start of the month there's a lot of action in your sector of success. I can't wait to tell you more. But if you are new to my channel thank you so much for joining us. This is very much a community. If you have any thoughts please share them. I interact with each comment. If you're a returning visitor thank you so much for your company. I much appreciate all your likes, comments, shares and subscriptions. If you've yet to subscribe, I'm racing towards 120,000 subscribers. Please click or tap on the bell notification symbol. That means every time I drop a video, you will get an alert. And if you would like to ascend above this Zodiac broadcast, and embrace the power of personal astrology. If you give me three pieces of your birth data of time and date and place, or if you don't know your time, date and place, I can produce for you your life roadmap report. This will give you searing insights into the patterns that have played out in your life so far, but also a much more intimate understanding of how to work with these energies more effectively going forwards. And in my special package of 30% off, you can also get your 12 month transit report. That's the moving planets in the sky interacting with that unique blueprint that only you were given when you were born. Please see the link below for more. So on the screen and now Gemini, there is your chart wheel and you can see that collective of energy, including your ruler Mercury, Chiron, the North Node, the Sun, all in, the 11th house. But right at the top of the chart, and particularly take note of Mars, that's near to the 10th house cusp, that's where you can be successful. And having Mars in such a prominent position can give you more confidence to strut your stuff, raise your profile. But I think it's going to be a case of who as much as what you know. And with Mercury going retrograde later on on the 1st, it just follows that some of the things that are going to inspire you at the start of the month might not quite work out exactly as you think. But then again, you could hear from someone from your past, reconnect, and actually by revisiting a topic, a strand, or something that's important to you, there can be a rejuvenation. Now, the other thing we need to be mindful of, the event chart is the position of the moon. It's in a very diplomatic location, but it is squaring up to Neptune and Venus. But I want you to be particularly mindful of Neptune. Moon square Neptune can create confusion. There may be somebody that you need to deal with this month, and it could be a boss, a line manager, an, an owner, Maybe in a bigger organisation, someone involved in human resources who you may find to be a bit tricky to deal with. And the reason for this is they may not give you clear and consistent messages, which is something that you really appreciate. I also want to take you back to the very start of the year because then we had Mercury, your ruler, in a retrograde and Mars very close to where the position of the moon is at the start of this month and they were squaring up with Neptune too. So this potential for a little bit of confusion or uncertainty around your career or professional situation is something that can be a factor for the whole of 2024. However, what we can see from this chart is that Venus and the part of fortune are bound together 
by all but four minutes. So there could be good luck for you around your uh, career and professional situation, but just work extremely hard in terms of those interpersonal uh, exchanges and particularly around your personal communication. Now through the first five days of this month, uh, Venus and Neptune very close together. And of course that can have implications for your love life. If you are really invested in a situation and it's going well, and you've got to know each other relatively recently, so perhaps over the last two or three years, you may be talking about that next level of commitment. And to be honest, Venus and Neptune in its most beautiful way can be one of the most inspiring of all aspects, but it can create some confusion. So just be aware that of what you're being told and scrutinizing it a little bit Fortunately, the North Node is reversing to meet with the Sun in your 11th house where Mercury is going retrograde and they become exact on the 5th, the very day that Venus moves out of the sign of Pisces and into Aries. Now in technical astrology, Venus is said not to be so good in the sign of Aries. But I feel in a natal chart, it gives someone more spark, more desire to go for what they need. And because Venus forges an instant brilliant angle to Pluto, the planet of transformation, it's possible that that relationship, whether it's professional or personal, that's inspiring you, but you've been a bit uncertain about what it's really about, you may get more clarity by the fifth, despite Mercury's retrograde, with the conjunction between the Sun and the North Node. Something could happen for you, particularly if you're a bit older, that has a reflection to something that happened around about 17 to 18 and a half years ago, the last time the North Node was going through Aries. But that uh, journey of Venus into that area that's to do with friendship can be very good if you are wanting to connect more with others. Or is it one person in particular? If you do find someone new, intriguing, it's probable that they're going to have knowledge or something about them in terms of cultural experience or travel that you find really exciting. But the new moon which occurs on the 8th is of course also a total solar eclipse. The third supermoon on the trot and that too is forging an amazing link to Pluto. But it's also within one minute of Chiron, the wounded healer. If you have found that friendships, connections to societies or groups, has been an area that's not always been easy for you, you may surprise yourself over the next six months and find that your ability to network, interact, see other people's viewpoints, but find ways to collaborate and cooperate can be an area that you can really thrive in but the key to it is believing that you're worthy of any developments that unfold. Now from the 10th to the 13th, the retreat in Mercury meets with the advancing Sun, and we have an exact Kazemi, or conjunction, an inferior conjunction, on the 11th. That's when the position of Mercury is in between the Sun and also Earth, but the Sun still magnifies the qualities of Mercury despite that retrograde. If you recall earlier, I said that there may be some kind of resumation in an old friendship, an old alliance, or perhaps you can find a, a way to look at an existing situation with a greater sense of clarity. Mercury retrogrades don't have to all be about glitches, problems, and delays. Now, of course, those are possible. All we can do is make sure the things we can control we're doing so precisely and efficiently. But if we're heading to the airport and we check that we've got our passport, our visa, we've had our inoculations, if we're going somewhere particularly exotic or off the beaten track, we can do all of those things. We can have our medicines in place, uh, all the different paperwork. But if we get to the airport and there's an industrial dispute, you can't control that. What you can control is anticipating that those things can happen to so make sure that you've got 
you know the necessary small bag with you that you can just be flexible around uh, keeping yourself uh, uh, clean and having some water and some food just in case that happens. So that's how we can work with Mercury retrogrades. But we are going to see on the 13th a conjunction between Mercury and Chiron. If there is something that does need to be discussed of a delicate nature around a friendship, a collective, an association, this can be a key moment. Also from the 14th through to the 19th, a wonderful connection between Mercury and Venus. Is there somebody in your group situation who's really inspiring you to the point it's now becoming rather more to do with attraction? Sometimes a meeting of minds can lead to a more, uh, a more invested relationship at an attraction level, and that could be uh, stimulated at that point. Also, Venus comes into a conjunction with the node on the 17th, and with Chiron on the 21st. These are all key dates because it's very much about how you think about your higher purpose and how you communicate it. The 11th house, the higher purpose, but it's also your long distance, your long distance plan, but it's also your associations, all really important. However, we do have a potential roadblock, to be honest, on the 19th. Because at that point, the Sun squares up with Pluto. So whereas the solar eclipse saw a terrific angle with Pluto, now we have the potential for a clash. What is this meaning? Well, it's because the Sun has moved for you into house 12, which is very much to do with tender energy. And in house 12, all this month, Jupiter and Uranus are very close together, but they come into an exact alliance on the 21st. It may be that something you're doing behind the scenes can actually bring you a result, particularly because Mars, remember I told you at the start of the month, Mars was going to be very influential for you because it was going to give you more confidence to assert yourself. Well, Mars supports that at Jupiter-Uranus conjunction on the 21st, absolutely superbly but that's in house 10 where you're most visible the sun jupiter and uranus are now in house 12 where we do things behind the scenes but pluto is in the ninth house and that's giving you a desire to get to the truth of what your world is really about but 12th house energy uh, in a square with ninth house energy can amplify sensitivities. If there is something that's not working at a more psychological level, or there's some people that you can't rely upon, someone who's not so uh, much of a, of a steady citizen in your world, maybe even someone who's quite critical, even if they're not critical to your face. So there can be some of these issues bubbling away. And all of that comes to the boil on the back of the full moon, which occurs on the 23rd. Now this occurs in the deep and passionate sign of Scorpio. And each year when it does occur, it can push some things into the open that can be a bit awkward for you. Because the moon's in the part of your situation to do with practicalities, to do with where you have to attend to responsibilities and obligations, the small details. But with the sun, but also Jupiter and Uranus tucked away in house 12, Jupiter potentially also a planet that can expand and exaggerate. The more psychological domain is battling with that more practical sphere, but both are T squared by Pluto in the ninth house. Unfortunately, an uncomfortable truth may come into the open around this time. I feel on the 24th, when Mercury, your ruler, goes direct, you will feel more comfortable with the situation, but by the 29th, Venus dies into your 12th house as well. So I feel the big picture of this month, to be honest, Gemini, is that you can start it in good heart. There's the potential to really go for big goals and ambitions, particularly with Mars so strident and Venus very beautifully linked to the part of fortune. So your powers of diplomacy and, and confidence really helping you go for those ambitions 
but it's all about how you connect to others and that's the big story of this month but the Mercury retrograde is going to tease out despite all the wonderful connections that are made despite the fact that Venus moves into house 11 despite the fact that there's a solar eclipse that we then have Venus and Mercury coming together but applying to uh, the North Node and also with Chiron I feel if there is a weakness around your connections to others it will be revealed and it's going to come into the open as this month draws to a close particularly as Mars aligns with Neptune in the last few days so it could be in a professional situation it could be around your personal situation but the best way to deal with this is really understanding what the role of Pluto is and also Chiron because Pluto in the sign of Aquarius through to the 2nd of September and then back again from the 18th of November is going to really open you up to lots of different ways of looking at life over the next years ahead but particularly it's going to in some strange ways bring the truth of situations into focus in a way which could be painful at times and I think that is what can happen particularly on that full moon towards the end of this month but what you can do is work on keeping your clarity as sharp as you possibly can but it's undeniable to be honest with Chiron so influential all through this month I think particularly on that solar eclipse if there is a wound around your ability or your uh, collective that you're involved in this there is something there which you find challenging or difficult you will have to stare it completely in the face by the end of this month but once you do you're reaching a point from which a new reality can emerge Pluto in the ninth house and then that's going to help you enormously as you go into May because Mars then bursts into your 11th house right on the first day and that's really going to take you forwards in a much more dynamic way particularly from when Mercury emerges from its post retrograde shadow on the 13th of May. It's been a real pleasure being with you Gemini thank you so much for joining me please do check out your weekly in-depth horoscope forecast at any time but for now uh, please like comment share or subscribe